famous author Mark Twain once said, It ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. Today's media throws us a whirlwind of information. Given that we lead busy lives, it's easy to take what we read at face value. In general, major news networks hire responsible journalists. However, occasionally misleading articles will still be published. One of the most common mistakes that journalists can make, particularly in the sciences, is to infer a causal relationship from a correlational study. Let me explain what I mean by using a fictional story. Imagine a king who rules over a vast country. Because the king is a kind king, he would like for all of his citizens to be as healthy as possible. He issues a survey to each town asking for the number of doctors they have and the number of illnesses they've had that year. Upon receiving the survey back, he is shocked to find that the fewer doctors the town had, the fewer illnesses occurred. Wanting to have the healthiest population possible, he quickly orders that all towns with too many doctors get rid of half their doctors. Not surprisingly to us, this action does not decrease the illness in his kingdom, but actually increases it. But why? The king made the mistake that many journalists now make. He assumed that the number of doctors was causing the increase in illness, when in fact, the number of doctors was only related to, or correlated to, the number of illnesses in each town. Us being the intelligent individuals that we are, have likely guessed that in fact, the relationship is reversed, and that when more illnesses are present, more doctors are needed to cure them, accounting for the higher number of doctors in towns with many illnesses. You can see how the consequences of this type of mistake can often be detrimental. While the king's failure may seem obvious, we sometimes will overlook these issues when reading a misleading news article. A recent article published by Fox News presents misleading information about one of the most important things to us, our children. In a recent study, Dr. Angie Page looked at over 1,000 children ages 10 through 11. Her study looked at two main variables, how many hours they spent in front of the TV or computer screen every day, and the degree of psychological difficulty they had. The study found that children who spent more than two hours a day in front of screens were 60% more likely to have psychological difficulties than those who spent less than two hours a day. The article leads the reader to believe that spending time in front of the TV screen will cause a child to have psychological difficulty. However, upon closer examination, we can see that this is not necessarily the case. We simply don't know which variable is causing the other. It could be the case that psychological difficulty leads to children spending longer time looking at screens, a possibility that the article fails to mention. There is also a third possibility that the article fails to entertain, the possibility that psychological difficulty and TV watching are both side effects of some other third variable. Perhaps children who are socially outcast have psychological difficulty because of this, and with no friends to play with, they end up spending lots of time watching TV. There are many third variables that might be at play here. The Fox News reporter fails to address these possibilities, and instead focuses on the more alluring causative relationship. As a consequence, many psychologically unhealthy children everywhere may come home after a tough day at school, only to find their TV unplugged. Next time you read a news article, Consider these poor psychologically disgruntled 10-year-olds, deprived of the happiest moments of their day. And remember that correlation does not imply causation.